Thank you. What happened? <laughs> I thought that was an aneurysm coming back. All of a sudden, I'm doing a hip show. All of a sudden, I'm Marty Ingalls. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I want to, Marty, I'm kidding. Get back on the couch. I want to know what you think. <laughs> I want to know what you think, America. Give me a call. My, I just see my friend down here. Rick, I love you. I haven't seen you in a long time. How you been? Huh? You're one of the nicest guys in the world, one of the best comics. So 1 800 522 Call me and uh, <laughs> let me piss on the name of your hometown. <laughs> you know, as a contributing humorist to the magazine The Weekly Standard, my guest and I penned one of the more perceptively funny pieces about the Middle East to date. He's appeared in over 40 films, numerous television shows and comedy specials, and is currently working on the new Christopher Guest movie, A Mighty Wind. Please welcome Larry Miller. Larry. Now, Larry, I have to tell you, um, the reason I, I wanted John, in addition to being so funny, is uh, you wrote a piece for the Weekly Standard, and I guess it ended up on the Internet. I must have had 20 people come up to me over the course of a week, and we put our show on the Internet, and we had done a thing about the Middle East a few weeks ago. It was yeah. pretty funny, but, you know, I kept thinking, wow, I, I never had this many people. <laughs> so I looked into it, and it was, I guess somebody had resent it out, mislabeled, as Dennis Miller, so I said, we got to get the guy on who wrote the piece because it's, I, I don't know how many of you are internet people, I don't know anything about it, there hasn't been anybody as ineffectual as me on the keyboard since Susan Day was in the Partridge family, but the fact is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wrote the piece, and I, I've read it in the interim, and it was, it was just brilliant. And, oh, um, thanks. By the way, it, it's been bouncing around for a while. It came out April 22nd. This was... Uh, the Weekly Standard Web Magazine. I don't know anything about the internet either. I didn't start going on until I started writing these columns. And uh, oddly enough, it's been st it's still going. Howard Stern read it on the air the other day. Well, yeah, when some when when somebody grabs at something, being that dancing baby yeah. from Ally McBeal or whatever, or this piece, <laughs> you know, it really you can see the power of the internet. And I never get it to some extent, but you can see how this has really taken off. Why don't you give some people some of the well, highlights of the piece and your feelings on the conflict? Well, over it's there. just saying, and and by the way, I we would probably disagree on some things because I don't see this as a hey, why don't, if you guys just do this and you guys just do that, hey, it's fine, it's, it's, it's peace. To me, as you mentioned, Barack offered the whole deal two years ago. You know, people talk about this being Arafat and Sharon, and, oh, it's mano a mano, and, oh, they're really tough and they really hate each other. Arafat's been there for 37 years. What's that, 15 Israeli leaders? And they all kept saying, how about now? No. How about now? No. Now, you think, you got to remember, this is not about... 12 people in an arid area. This is about, well, you, this is about 500 million Arabs and, 500, and 5 million Jews. It's, think of a football field and a pack of matches sitting in the middle of it. That's Israel. <laughs> and the people who have been trying to destroy the place for 54 years, not argue about it, kill everyone and drive it into the sea, are now saying, if you just give us half that pack of matches, everyone will be nice. Right. But in essence, I think... Oh, I, I've begun to believe, and maybe there's so, some optimists out there. I believe if you gave the Palestinians everything they asked for, their main hobby would still be trying to destroy well, the people what, you of know, Israel. There was a wonderful piece on uh, PBS Frontline last night where they're saying they interview the, each of the guys, the leader of Hamas, Islamic Jihad, all these folks. Look, there are decent people everywhere in the world. There are decent people here. There are decent people all over the Arab Mideast. But guess what? They're not the ones running things. And they're not interested in saying, you know what? Let's all hold hands and sing, we are the world. They're interested in, you know, in the plain talk, they want to say, and they said it last night on PBS, yes, we kill everyone, every Jew. And guess what, folks? They're coming here. And if you don't know that already, they are. They came here September 11th, and they're coming again. If you don't know it, they're building it now. Most of you do know it. And we're going to get it. The question is, you want to pay for it now, or you want to pay for it in five years? And in five years, the price is going to be a lot higher. It's going to be nuclear and chemical, and you know it. And because the, it's the leaders of most of the countries, come on, the princes in Saudi Arabia, they get the 72 virgins now. Right. 
They get it today. I know They're not I killing watched themselves. You. I saw the beat true Hollywood story. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, to say that Arafat's never run for election, they say he's the elected leader of the, of the area. Well, come on, that's like the Soviet Union. Another great win for Stalin. Right. You know... <laughs> you know, other than the bombs they strap to their chest, I have no idea what makes the Palestinians tick. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> we, uh... Wow. Thank you. Well, anyway... All right, so we're in danger. And we live in a country that, for some reason, and God knows I, I alluded to this a little earlier, I have no idea. I understand being open-minded. Right. But, but when we get to the point where we're literally going to start giving up our lives so we don't supposedly insult people or violate their rights, or I mean, it's crazy. These people have no rules, and we're playing by the most amazing rules. It's, what do you think of profiling? Is, well, is profiling before, just... By, by the way, I just, I just thought of something I, I have to add quickly. You know the only reason they haven't built these things yet? You know, the only, the only reason they're not flying yet in all these countries like Iraq and Iran, the only reason they can't get the missiles right, and it's ironic, the only reason they don't work, they have no Jews. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most amazing thing. You see, we're looking... We're, we're looking for... Let's see, we need some brilliant scientists. Where can we go? This is, this is a puzzle. <laughs> you know, it's the... the but isn't it true? Where are you going to look for brilliant scientists? The Germans did the same thing in World War II. Oh, it's a race to build the atomic bomb. Oh, you just beat us. We almost did it, too. You killed all the smart people. <laughs> you know, like, how big a mystery is that? <laughs> we've got a phone call for you. Line 8, we've got Lauren from Maxwell, New Mexico. Lauren? Yeah. What's happening, Maxwell? Is that where you find those little... Alien embryos in the crash ship, or what is that down there? Uh, those, those are 30 or 40 feet away, but it's hot as hell here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lauren, what's your question, babe? Hey, you two guys. Since Israel ain't gonna move, and Palestine hasn't run out of rocks, what the hell are we gonna do with them? <laughs> oh, it is hot, and you gotta stay out of the sun. <laughs> I'm, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you warned us, and Lauren's here already. Uh, <laughs> line five, we've got Drake from Fox Lake, Illinois. Drake? Evening, Dennis. Evening, Larry. Wow, the mellow FM stylings of Drake from Fox <laughs> Lake. <laughs> this is Starship. Dennis, I'm glad, I'm glad the shoulder feels better, Dennis. Have you been through Percodan rehab yet? Yeah, I had a little carpal tunnel incident with some crazy masturbation bins. What's your question? <laughs> since, since Yasser Arafat is a two-faced lion dog anyways, do you guys think Israel should have taken him out when they had the chance? I mean, the guy talks real nice about us to the American press, but when he's hanging with the homeboys, it's the same old death to the infidel shit. Is he talking about Hussein or Arafat? I didn't even know that. That was uh, Arafat, and yeah. uh, well, oddly enough, he's with the State Department. <laughs> so that <laughs> shows you how far... Yeah, you know, look, that, that, that's kind of the way I feel. I mean, if there's someone home there, I'm sorry, in my opinion, the Israelis have been saying for years, how about now, take it, let's please... Is there, does anyone here, anyone in the country believe the Israelis are saying, yes, constant war, that's what we want? You know, it's idiotic. They've been saying for years, stop it. Let's all just sit down here. Well, Arafat makes great hay off the fact that the English language and their language is so different that he can speak to both people. Nobody ever knows what the fuck he's talking about. Like, <laughs> he looks at Chris Matthews the other night. We want pee, 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 pee. You know, and he turns around and he mumbles a little. Do you know what the Arabic, uh, Arabic word for Ovaltine is? <laughs> Bosco. <laughs> By That's how different these languages are. By the way, are. you know what? <laughs> Christ, I was on a roll and I knocked that turd out. Okay. <laughs> you know what, by the Go way? Early. I'll tell you, he's, he said one thing that was perfectly honest and perfectly revealing. Who, the guy on the phone? <laughs> no. Arafat. <laughs> After he, Barack made him that offer and he walked out on it, they, they asked him, why would he turn that down? And he said, it's absolutely right. He said, if I took that offer, I'd be drinking tea with Rabin. And what he means by that, if you remember, Rabin was assassinated in Israel. What he means is, the people would kill him like that. Right. The, most of the folks there who are running things, and again, it's not the decent people, most of the folks running things, he knew in a second. He'd be gone. They'd take him right out. He can't accept that. 
it's it's too it's much of a whirlwind of, yeah. already. All right, Larry. Well, the piece is receiving great heat. Please check it out on your internet. And uh, can I tell you something real quickly? Yeah. I'm going to Israel for the first time in a couple of weeks. I said some for the first time in a couple of weeks. I said it's important. I think every American Jew should think about doing that. You're going over to perform or what? With Seinfeld. Oh, you and Jerry are yep. going over. Oh, well, that's it's uh, very admirable, Mr. Miller. Yeah, yeah.